Okay, thank you for joining us on Paranormal XL. This is our first episode, so we will just go over some basics. I am your host, Gigi, and with me until the end is Mary of Spiritual Voices. We're just a couple of gals that want to share our interest and knowledge about paranormal. I find paranormal events and happenings very intriguing. I don't per se believe in paranormal, but nor do I not believe. I'm a very indecisive person. Whereas my partner in spirit finding is a very is a very spiritual person. So I'm hoping this podcast can I'm hoping this podcast can catch the attention of believers from all ends of the spectrum. We will be discussing things from ghosts, which in this podcast we will refer to as spirits, all the way to aliens. We will take you along on some spirit huntings with us, even do some readings. So whether you are joining us for knowledge or enjoyment, sit back and enjoy the show. So with that being said, let's talk paranormal. What do you think, Mary? Let's do it. So for the listeners that don't know exactly what paranormal is, the Webster's Dictionary says not scientifically explainable or supernatural, which is pretty cut and dry, but there is so much in the gray area, and that is why we have Mary here to help, at least on the spiritual side. I know when I hear paranormal, I automatically think ghost or spirits or the freaky movie Paranormal Activity. What is paranormal to you, Mary? Well, I think it's a little bit of everything. Um, We have the spirits of our crossed over loved ones that connect with us and follow us and sometimes as a medium you have spirits who just connect with you when you're out and about and sometimes try to come home um sometimes there's energy in certain places that reoccur over and over again and that's a type of haunting so there's a wide spectrum of things in all sorts of ways you can look at it and look into it and delve into it deeper Say so during my research, I did learn the difference between ghost hauntings and earthbound, which I know you have stuff to say on this. But the research that I found, um, ghosts are people who chose to stay instead of crossing over. The spirit that chose to stay wants to make sure their loved ones are okay without them. I also learned that animals will usually stay as well until you tell them that it's okay to go, which warms my heart because. I love animals, and I think of all the doggies that I've lost. (laughs) Well, I know a lot of people, too, who talk about um, having an animal that has crossed over and being able to um, not have any animals in the house and being there at night and feeling like an animal has jumped up with them. And that with knowing that that is their animal that crossed over, still with them. It's just a different form of energy. It's just their way of saying, I'm I'm still still here. here. Oh, I miss my doggies. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Anyhow, then... um, Also, an earthbound is a spirit that chose to stay for closure, then cross over. But the light will close, then they are trapped. Then they are trapped. If an earthbound attaches itself to a host, you can become ill, tired, and depressed. And well, another thing to keep in mind, too, some earthbound energies don't even realize that um, they're dead. If they have experienced a trauma in their death, they might not realize that they have crossed over or they have passed away and they just kind of float not knowing where to go. Sometimes they're confused. Sometimes it could be a traumatic event from the 1800s and they're in their home now and the atmosphere is completely different for them. And so that's where they create the noise and the chaos because they don't know what to do. Makes sense. You see a lot of that in movies that portray ghosts or spirits crossing over, like the movie Ghost. Mm Mm-hmm. What a classic. It is. <laughs> um, and then uh, hauntings, this is where hauntings come in, and Earthbound realizes their chance to cross over has passed, so they get upset and scared, and um, they tend to steal our, our energy. Earthbounds only get their energy from us. They vibrate at a very low rate, so they feed off our lower level emotions, which is anger and stress. They say they will hide keys and such to cause arguments to get energy from it. What are your thoughts on that? That is very true. And um, something to keep in mind also is that when you have an earthbound energy, it does have a lower vibration. So it will tend to connect with people who have a lower vibration. You will find a lot of earthbound energies in bars because everybody's there drinking. And um, it's (laughs) sort of like... I'll keep in mind that when I decide to have a glass of wine, I always set a protection over myself because that lowers your defenses and it also lowers your vibration. And so if, <laughs> if let's say you had um, an earthbound energy in your space and they were an alcoholic, 
No. Well, oh, you're yeah. drinking wine. They're going to attach themselves to you so that they can feel what it feels like to have that drink because they don't know any better. They're connecting with that energy. And so the more you drink, the lower that energy is. It's so what you're saying right now because I'm drinking a glass of wine <laughs> is. <laughs> I hope you set your protection. I don't have any protection. No, we're good. I promise. You. Okay, okay. I know you got my back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how scary! Um. So, for the listeners that have experienced any type of ghost or haunting, is there any advice that you would give them? You know, them being scared, or because it is a scary thing, and people will just put it out of their mind or chalk it up to something else. Well, the first thing I would keep in mind is not to let any kind of fear rise up. Because a lot of the spirit, spirit's always with us, everywhere. It doesn't matter where you go, there's spirit. And a lot of times it's spirits of our loved ones, people who are crossed over that want to connect with us, and they just have a message. Sometimes it's guardian angels of, you know, like my grandmother. She's a guardian angel. I know she's with me a lot. My father's crossed over. He's with me a lot. But it's nothing to be afraid of. And sometimes when you hear those bumps in the night, really it's just their way of trying to try to connect with you and give you a message. If you find yourself waking up in the middle of the night at a certain time, it's just a way of um, them trying to give you a message and to pay attention to what's happening. Dang. Um, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know it's, um, in my personal experience, like I said, I'm not a believer or a non-believer. It's just scary to um, accept that that's what it could be. Just because I, I can't necessarily prove it. Just like, you know, something you're out and about and something happens to you, try to explain it to another person. They Just because they didn't see it with their own eyes, it's hard to get somebody to take and you seriously. Is. I think that's why it's really hard to, um, to believe in spirituality because if you can't see it and touch it, it it's not real. Mm-hmm. But at the same side, you, we believe in Jesus and we believe in God and we pray, but we can't see him. We mm-hmm. can't touch them, but we know they're real. It's that the all same comes thing. back to being paranormal. Yeah. And, and I know we're, I don't want to say get hated on for that, but, but criticized for even saying that, but it's true. Well, I think um, it's a little bit of everything. I think it takes a little bit of everything to make, to make it work. That there's no just one way. There's a truth to everything that we touch. Oh, yeah. And so, um, you know, knowing that, for me... Knowing that there's um, there's a deeper meaning to the things that happen to us, that's taken the fear out of me. I'll give you a little story that, you know, when I really first started getting into spirituality and developing my psychic abilities, I remember being at a gas station. And my son, uh, JJ, he was, I think he was three. And I remember walking out of the gas station, I had my keys in my hand. Mm-hmm. And um, all of a sudden they flew out of my hand. And... I was like, oh, that's kind of weird because I had a good hold of them. Right. And I went and I picked them up, didn't think anything of it. I got in the van and uh, my son says, are you all right, Mama? And I said, yeah, why? He goes, oh, that man, he took the keys right out of your hand. And I said, what man? He's like, I can't say. I'm like, okay. But like, just like now, I get chills all over <laughs> thinking about it. Yes, I just did hear it. It made me think like, okay, so he's more open to it because he's younger. No, he hasn't been innocent. conditioned to not believe in it. Yep. But um, it makes you think. It wasn't scary, but right. it was just the spirit trying to get your attention. And maybe he was throwing the keys out of my hand because it stalled me just enough to miss an accident. I you always know, think about that. Everything happens for a reason. There's no coincidences. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of thinking about things like that instead of fear-based, where there might be a reason why it's happening. Right. So what would be the reason so you can find the solution and make it go away? Huh. It is... um. Uh, what day? I'm in Thursday. I was driving home and getting off the exit to come home. I've never missed it before. I didn't really miss it on purpose. Nobody was letting me over. And boy, was I mad because I got out early. And I was going to be <laughs> home like a half hour early to get my chores done. And no, I had to drive 10 miles east further and then another 10 back to come home because I was at an extra 20 miles. Boy, was I mad. But then I thought, well, maybe... There was a reason for that. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe I was going to get sideswiped again, like last time. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, it was, it was. And you always listen to that intuition because, you know, we have the guardian angels that are with us and our spirit guides are with us. And sometimes when we pull up to a stop sign and 
we decide that we want to go right, even though normally we would go left, a lot of times that's spirit trying to connect with us to keep us safe. A lot of times the spirit that's around us is love and light and wants to help us. You, you have your darkness, but something to keep in mind is you can't have any dark without any light. Yeah. It's, it's the same thing. The light always breaks over the darkness. And so don't let that fear based in and you'll develop a different understanding of what spirit is and what hauntings are. Right. Sometimes it's people that are haunted, not homes. Right. So it wouldn't matter where you go. If you don't face that reality that there's a connection to you and you need to figure out where it is, it's going to stay with you forever. Right. Huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> I have a story that I I don't even know if I've ever said this out loud. Um, it was I'll keep in mind and well you know me, listeners don't know me, but I can't remember what happened yesterday, but this was I will never forget this. I was about five or six and we lived in a trailer and at night I had I hated going to sleep in my room. So I would always try to go to fall asleep out in the living room. Mm-hmm. And my mom and stepdad would be like, you need to go to bed. And I'm like, no, I'm just resting my eyes. Well, then I knew what I was trying to do. I was trying to sleep on the couch because it was closer to them. Um, and if I would fall asleep, they would just let me sleep there. Um, but when I had to go to sleep in my room, I, uh, it was just, I don't want to say. Um, my... Um, my bed would shake. It would shake me awake. And I remember two times specifically that I got woke up because something hit the top of my head. It woke it woke me up. Like, and I remember that, like, even talking about it now, it's like I, I can see it. Like, I'm on the ceiling and I'm watching it happen, but I can't figure out whatever did that and why my bed would shake. And I brought that up to my mom and my stepdad, and they told me it was just my imagination, so that's just... What I always thought, but I knew that it scared me. I was five or six, like kindergarten. Like, mm-hmm. I yeah. don't, what? No. <laughs> I, I want to sleep on the couch. <laughs> like, and... That's where it really comes through a lot. I remember, um, this is a funny story, but um, I was about three, and my brother was my hero. And so I'm, I'm sleeping in the bedroom with him, and he's, uh, he's he keeps on telling me there's no monsters, there's no such thing as monsters, because every single night... I would hear somebody stomp up the stairs and walk into the closet over and over again. So I was determined that it was monsters. And um, he finally had gotten me calmed down where I was going to go to sleep and I was just fine. I wasn't crying and I wasn't scared. Then all of a sudden rocks started hitting the window. And so then I screamed. And I feel bad for my brother because it ended up being his girlfriend. (laughs) Trying to get him to sneak out. So then he got in trouble and got caught. Girls are troublemakers. I know. Those are tramps. (laughs) But, uh, but later I realized, you know, I was, what I was hearing was spirit coming up the stairs at a certain time at night. So that was more like um, an inner energy-based haunting where the same thing happened over and over again. The okay. house growing up was just amazing. We'd have people that would come there and just not come back. Never bothered me, per se. Right. I would hear them speak with me and things like that. But um, there was a lot of incidences that I'll talk about as we, as we go along and speak some more. But there was a lot of people who'd come. And that come back. That's what I was going to say. I got one other story that I want to say on this episode. But I actually got so many for not being a believer. Um, I do have a lot of situations that I, I, I just can't explain. Mm-hmm. And, and it's just easier for me to chalk them up to it is my imagination. Because that's just so much easier <laughs> <laughs> than scaring myself. Because I do get scared easy. Just like watching the paranormal activity movies. Have you ever seen them? Oh, yeah. Some oh, my God. Movies, I love those. <sighs> the Conjuring, all those so, movies, I love them. Just, that movie, at the first one, it kind of starts out slower, so you're like, okay, and then it was kind of like the Blair Witch Project, you know, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, this is going to make me sick, like motion sickness, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, but then it started getting good and then scary, then I had to watch it with my hands over my eyes, you know, just peeking out, and I'm, but I, I can't sleep with my leg outside of my um, sheet anymore and that really upsets me because I get really really hot at night and but I don't want something to take me up to the attic and and, oh, yeah. that, and that, that's scary and it, it looks so real and I just I just can't right now <laughs> but my other story is the one other one is um I was probably about six no I wasn't 60 I was about 18 so right before I got pregnant with my daughter um 
was at my dad's house. And, um, yeah, cause I was a senior in high school. Um, I had just got home. It was dark out. Nobody was home. So I'm walking through the house and I'm turning on the lights. Cause, well, that's what I do because I'm a scaredy cat. Well, I'm scared of the dark, so don't worry about it. Oh, so scared. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I don't get after my son for leaving lights on. Cause I'm like, it's okay, buddy. Yep, leave him on. Um, um, so I'm going through and I make it to like the dining room area and we have a staircase that's like halfway up and then it shifts and then goes and went. Like this, listeners can't see what I'm doing, but I'm I'm showing <laughs> Mama Mary. Um, so like halfway up, I stop and I look, and there is it appears to be just an old man, kind of shrugged over. He had a red flannel and old beat up jeans and a cane and had like white hair, and it scared the bejesus out of me because I'm like, hey, my dad's old, but he ain't that old, and it ain't my dad because nobody's here. So I kind of like, I look forward and I'm like, oh, and I look back and he's gone. So I kind of just was like, okay, you're just seeing stuff, whatever. Then a few weeks later, my ex-sister-in-law and I, we were talking about the house and noises and stuff. And dad always told us just to chalk it up because it's to the hardwood floors and stuff because creaking and whatnot. Well, then she goes on to say that she's seen the same thing. I didn't even say what I had seen because I was like embarrassed. I didn't want anybody to be like, okay, you're crazy, you know, but... Her and I also have experienced other things in that house, like, together at the same time, like, when we thought we were asleep, dude, you awake, yeah, oh my god, you know, you turn around, no, you turn around, like, because we felt something there, Mm -hmm. but she was pregnant, I had just brought my daughter home, and we were sleeping downstairs in the living room on two different sides, looking at the walls, Yeah. and we should have been asleep for hours, but both of us, something woke us up, and we discussed it. Neither of us turned around because we were scared, but we felt like we were being, like, it was just weird. And we just kind of chalked it up to maybe hormones going crazy wild because that's what happens when you're pregnant or just have a baby, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, but I have so many more stories. (laughs) And I know you do too. (laughs) I remember um, talking about being younger. You know, going back to the story where always hearing the footsteps walking up the stairs and going into the closet. My um my cousin Jeremy was over and he was staying the night with me. I think he was staying the weekend. And we had a living room that was downstairs to like sort of like in the basement. And I could hear walking back and mm-hmm. forth in the hallway. And I'm like, oh, oh man, I gotta go up and get Jeremy because if my dad hears him and wakes up, he's gonna be ticked. Right, he's right, right. Go off. And so I walked upstairs to um tell Jeremy to be quiet. And there's nobody in the hallway, but I can see Jeremy sitting in my room and he's shaking and his face is white. And he had, um, well, the Nintendo. He had the controller oh, oh, by, his, yeah. by his feet. He was just shaking. His whole lip was quivering. When I asked him what was wrong, he said he saw the white woman there. There was a woman in white, and she turned and she walked, the wall, walked into the wall. After that, he really didn't want to come back to the house. It freaked him out. And so when I did, like, come to find out that that house was one of the first farmhouses in Vermontville, and the, the couple that had owned that property, they used to own pretty much all the property in Vermontville, and they slowly sold it off. Sold it off. <laughs> and um, an, an elderly couple, they had died in that house. And so it was always my belief that, you know, the spirit was harmless, so it didn't really bother me too much. Right. But I do, I just believe it was her energy that was there, because my dad had, you know, talked about coming downstairs, and um, I think he had walked into the kitchen, he saw a woman in white. Well, it's and, scary if there's not a woman in white normally there in your house, you know, I mean, yeah, wow. and, um, I would always sit in my room and I would hear a woman talk to me and call my name and I would go downstairs to ask my mom what she wanted. She's like, I didn't call you. And that's when I slowly started realizing that I had those gifts. Okay. Where I, was gonna ask I started that. getting into that psychic thing where, um, learning that I could hear spirit, I could right. know the spirit in a different kind of way than normal. Now, was that scary for you when you... When you started thinking about it that way, instead of just like these, okay, these things are happening, okay, it is what it is. It became less scarier because then I had a reasoning for it. Okay. It, it, it kind of gave, sense. um, versus it be just being scary because you're being haunted, you have that realization that there's spirit trying to connect with you and they connect with you because your vibration matches theirs. Okay. And so when you're a medium, if their vibration's matching yours, then there's less fear there. You have to let go of right. the fear because that's that's where lower earthbound energies come in. They attach to the fear. Right. If you only hold love, 
and faith, you have less chance of attachment or experiencing bad things. Okay. I had a good one for you. <laughs> It'll come to you. Um, when you decided that, okay, that's what it was, now did you do your research and learn, or did you try to find I, people I that... I really got into, um, the first thing I really got into was serial killers, that's because I was weird, and I had a mom who that's yeah, my encouraged, favorite. encouraged my weirdness, and then I did a lot, I did do a lot of research, I got books on, you know, paganism and spirituality in general, because, you know, paganism and... The Native American spirituality are so close, and I always okay. connected so deeply with Native Americans. I used to collect everything Native American, and that's why, because you know, your soul will draw you into the things that you're supposed to connect with, so you can find the answers that you're seeking. You just have to pay attention to where you're being led. You kind of got to feed your soul, and if it's, it draws you and you find yourself energized, you have to right. do it. There's a reason for it. Well, my soul drives me to crafting. I am. <laughs> I'm a young lady in a, that has an old lady soul. Oh, sorry, go on. No, they, <laughs> you, like, you like to have projects. You like oh, to be God. creative. You like to have projects. Oh, jeez. And that's because you want to give to other people. That's a good thing. You're fine. And, um, and you know, and spirits, not, you know, sometimes I really think spirits there to protect us and um, to help. And I probably shouldn't tell this story, but I remember being a young child and, um, my grandma told me a story about the house that, you know, my mom and them grew up in. And one story that she told me was, it, it kind of scared me, but it made sense, where my aunt and uncle, they had come to stay there for the night, and then they had a huge fight. And in the middle of the night, my uncle woke up with hands around his throat. And um, it scared the crap out of them, and they left. But my belief was there was a spirit there that was trying to protect my aunt okay. and then um there was another instance where you know they would tell stories about how my grandpa would get up to go to the bathroom and there would be a woman there and she would talk to him and then the most significant thing that always stuck with me was the night my grandpa had a heart attack right before he had a heart attack all the doors in the house slammed shut woke him up and that's what saved his life Thing, he was he would have just died in his sleep, but because right, all right. those doors slammed, it woke them up, and he knew he was having having a heart attack, and they took him to the hospital. Oh wow! And so sometimes, even though it seems scary because you can't touch it, you can't see it, and you can't explain it, sometimes you just have to have faith mm -hmm. that everything happens for a reason, and that sometimes just the unknown is so scary. It is. It, it is, but and there comes like. With you, because of your personality and stuff, you came to realize, okay, it doesn't have to be scary. I'm yeah. going to look into what's going on for sure. You know, you, you educated yourself on what was going on, mm -hmm. other than just being scared and saying, okay, it's just my imagination. This isn't real. Because that's what I tell myself. I, well, I was lucky, too. My, just... my mom supported me when I would get into certain things. I remember her taking me to my first psychic fair when I was 16. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh she, my God. She, it was the, the Holiday Inn over on Lansing Street in Grand Ledge. I, I remember it to this day. And oh, that's I so would, cool. I would not get a reading from a psychic because I did not want my mom to know all the bad stuff that I've been doing. Oh, right, right, right. So I refused. But she did She did <laughs> buy me my first tarot deck. Okay. And it's the tarot deck that I have now that I use for all my readings. I just have okay. that connection. And that's you what I learned gave that me I my it. first tarot deck. I know, see? I just find all this stuff very, very interesting. And if... Again, not that I believe or don't believe. I am a very indecisive person, like beyond belief. But you're open to the to oh the gosh, possibility. so open. I'm I'm too open minded sometimes, <laughs> where it leaves me where I'm in the middle. I don't know which direction to go, and that is actually a curse, like because then I'm stuck, and mm -hmm. then nothing happens because I can't pick a direction. Because I'm like, well, this or maybe this, and I, just pick a side, Sarah. Well, and sometimes it's hard because there's there's different sides. Just like religion, you know, how do you choose which religion is the right one? There's so many different opinions and so many different ways, but why can't a piece of each one yes. be a part of the truth? That's ex exactly. I, I've been to so many different churches, um, and I find each of them very intriguing, just like I do paranormal 
or um, the spiritual lifestyle. Um, it's so intriguing. I, I want to suck up all the information from all it of is. them. And I, not that I, because I, I definitely don't agree with all of it. I, oh, I yeah. definitely don't. There, there are some, because I am so open-minded, where there are some religions that are just mm-hmm. completely just closed. Yeah. And it's that makes me sad. It doesn't make me mad, but it makes me sad because they're missing out on some really great people like you. Mm-hmm. Like, you have so much love to give. And it just, that's where the recording's going to go on red is my laugh because I cackle. That's all right. <laughs> I'm like a witch. But I am not. But anyway. <sighs> <laughs> um, Yeah, it, it's, I, I don't know. There's so much judgment in the world. See, this is where I'm going to start getting off track of paranormal, but there is so much judgment. People are so quick to judge, but why not just find it? It's okay to find it intriguing well, and want to learn you're more. You're really not getting off the subject of paranormal because when you think about it, that's what Catholic priests do. You know, one okay. day um, I was I was saging the home and I was blessing the home, and my daughters were making fun of me until we watched the show and the Catholic priest was doing the same exact thing. Yeah. They go in there and they investigate paranormal just in a yeah. different way yeah. for a different meaning. So really, it's not off track. Religion, it all... It all connects and intercedes. Okay. And inside there lies your real truth. You know, some of the greatest, I would say some of the greatest paranormal researchers would be Catholic priests. Because they're hired to do it and they're only going to do the most, the most demanding ones. The ones that they think they have to do. Yeah. Because they have to research you know, And it. that just, it, it, that strikes me as so odd because I'm not, I'm not bashing on any religion by any means. By any, mm-hmm. people... Like, the priests that you're talking about, they're at, like, a different level than, like, their followers, quote-unquote. Yes. Yep. Per se. They stop at a level that they don't understand, and then they become so close-minded at at that level that they stop mm-hmm. at. Yep. So, yeah, religion we could talk about forever. Like, we could just make a full thing on that. But, anyway, I'm not going to do that. But, I don't know. that, that that's Yeah, it's frustrating to me. It is. It is. um, Because sometimes, you know, I've experienced things like with my shop where, you know, a woman came in and she was asking me all sorts of questions or writing down my information. And then in the end, she went off about how she was, she was going to save my soul. And after, you know, I was, I was disturbed by that. Mm -hmm. And my feelings were hurt because I just spent a whole hour with her talking and having discussion. And, you know, and, um, she said, you know, the last thing she said to me was, well, I'm, I really like that we can sit here and have a difference of opinions because we have different types of religion. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, this is what this is all about. Come to my shop. That's You You can have the opinion you want, but we'll just talk about it. She said, well, yeah. that, she said, well that disturbs me because that, that means you're going to hell. No. And then she got up and she walked away. And I said, well, just so you know, at least three times a day, I sit in prayer and meditation. When's the last time you prayed? And she got mad and she walked out. On Sunday. <laughs> I mean, that 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 really peeves me because <laughs> it you're allowed to have difference of opinions. That's what makes the world go mm-hmm. round. And and I nowadays I don't want to say more than ever, but nowadays that gets shown more because of social media and you know yeah. whatnot. We we see a lot more. People are allowed to have their own opinions, and well. When we should be. Well, we're allowed to have our own opinions, but you get criticized in a bad way for that. No, why can't you say, you know what, I respect you for your opinion, mm-hmm. and that's okay because you are you. And if we were all the same, what a boring world that would be. It would be, and I think, again, that takes us back, you know, to that the paranormal subject where that's why I think... Um, some of them do close off because it's fear-based, mm-hmm. yeah. and they're taught to close it off. It's, that's just what the religion has taught them. It's not and acceptable that, to be a certain way. Yeah, not, not, so it, it I, really I think is. that's where the closed-minded it comes from is the fear of the unknown, because they've been raised to be way. to be fearful of it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they don't know any different. And then the the ones that really pull away from those type of religions. That's because they feel a draw to something else. Like they know there's more. While while there's God and there's heaven, there's more. There's more to this world than just getting up 
and going to work every day and paying your bills and coming back <laughs> home and, and waiting and yeah. waiting to pass over and go to heaven. There's so much more. There's so much more you purpose to, to everything that we're doing. Oh, there's, yeah. There's a bigger purpose than just mm -hmm. just that. Yes. And I think that's that defines paranormal. In paranormal, that's where we're going to find our answers. That was a good one. Oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> I, I, I like that. I, it's kind of I like out. that, Mary. Yeah. <laughs> Mama Mary. <laughs> Mama <Bubba. laughs> that darn wine. <laughs> yes, we are wine drinkers. We we enjoy our glasses of wine. Um, it, it is a kind of early in the day. Oh, right. but it's okay. It's good. Um, it's 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 paranormal XL. Why not? That's right. Go big or go home. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think um. A story, this story has always stuck with me when, from when I was a little kid. It was like, oh, it, it still s sends shivers up my spine. This is the one home I would never go back to. Yeah. And um, I remember when my aunt, she first moved in the house. Nobody was in there, and we were just looking at it. And I remember going in, and it was an old farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. And I remember walking up the stairs and getting this creepy feeling that there was something with me. Like, I almost wanted to run back out of the house, but I kind of just blew it off, like, whatever, <laughs> you know. Where, um, <coughs> did I remember, after they got all moved in, coming to stay with them for a week. I think it was during the summer. And, uh, I remember the first night. I'm always, and I was afraid of the dark. I always have been. And so Ooh. I wanted a nightlight on. And so they, they did not sleep with nightlights. So I was having a hard time falling asleep. Right. And I remember my aunt coming up the stairs and just yelling, get out of the hallway, get to bed. And everybody was in bed. And we're like, we're not in the hallway. And she goes, oh, I suppose it's the ghost, right? Uh -huh. And I, I started laughing, and everybody just turned around and stared at me. I'm like, you're joking, right? And they just stared at me. So that kind of creeped me out, I'm not going to lie. Oh, and so I remember falling asleep, and then in the middle of the night waking up, because I heard people screaming and yelling. And I right. heard covered door slamming over and over again. And all of a sudden, I heard someone stomping up the stairs. So I put... I put my head, my you know, my head under the covers. Well, and I'm yeah. thinking, oh, here comes my aunt. She's gonna be pissed that I'm awake. <laughs> and so the next morning, I asked her what they were fighting about, and uh, she goes, "We weren't fighting. What are you talking about?" And I told her what I heard, and she goes, "I wasn't kidding about the ghost. She says we hear that all the time." And then I remember, um, like one of the last days that I stayed there, she was gone, and my little cousin was upstairs because she had gotten in trouble for climbing over the couch. That doesn't really matter, but, but we're just right, gonna add right. it. And we heard walking around up there. So we were going to go up there and tell her to get back in bed before my aunt got home so she wouldn't get in trouble. So we went up there and she was sound asleep. And then all of a sudden, we heard noise and we looked at the stairs and you could hear something coming up the stairs. You know, they're old creaky steps. Someone, right. someone was walking down the stairs. Right, right. And then all of a sudden, he went and grabbed my cousin and we were getting ready to go back down the stairs. And as we started going down the stairs, something blew past us and pushed us back. So we ran down the stairs. Well, and it did not uh, help yeah. that we were sneaking in um, the movie Night of the Living Dead. <laughs> that did not help at all. So like probably a minute or two went by and we were all sitting on uh, the, the couch and the door to the stairs slammed shut all by itself. So yeah, after I left there, I never went back. And then, you know, come to find out eventually... They, they moved because stuff started flying off the wall and hitting the walls. So they ended up having a poltergeist. Oh, see, that's where I get scared and I don't want to believe in anything. And, you know, I'm I not just for sure where poltergeists come from. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think, you know, sometimes I think when spirit... Um, now, is that a type of demon? Um, no, I th a poltergeist is more I can move things. It has enough power to move things. You know, spirit has to draw energy in order okay. to manifest things or to appear or to move things. So it's just a really pissed off ghost. And sometimes I think it is. Sometimes I think it's spirit that is trying to communicate and nobody's listening. So then it goes a step farther to communicate. Oh, that to happen. That's scary. And so, you know, whenever <laughs> I get a sign or a symbol from spirit, I acknowledge it. Okay. In any shape or form that I can. And, um, like, you know, like this morning when I was laying down, I was just laying there, and it felt like somebody started playing with my hair, like brushing my bangs out of my face. And then I oh. heard a little boy whisper in my ear, are you okay? So I just answered yes, and then it stopped. Or sometimes 
um, I'll feel twirling in my hair or I'll feel pain. Sometimes the spirit connects with you. They want you to know how they died. And so if I'm experiencing a severe pain, I'll tell them, thank you. Now, please take it away. Right. And if it goes away, then I know it was spirit. That always, okay. always happens. It's sort of like they just want you to acknowledge them. Because right, they're, they're not really there. gone. They're just, a, they're just a different kind of energy. Everything's energy. So when our souls... Right, they're not physically cross, here. Yeah, but their energy is. And they, you know, I think sometimes when we grieve our loved ones, if we knew that their energy is just right next to us, and all we have to do, out, to do is reach out and touch it, I think it would change our perspective on death. It would. I, I think... I miss all my loved ones. <laughs> you know, they're never gone. My, my, my dad connects with me all the time. See, I talk to my Aunt Jane all the time. I actually have her scarf that I got from my mom. <sighs> my Aunt Jane. I just, there, there's no words to describe her. Well, you you came to the funeral. You, yeah. You've seen all the people yeah. there. She was just an amazing woman. And I actually have her scarf. And it, it's around um, the seat in my, my car, my passenger seat. So call me crazy, whatever you will. And like I said, and I will always say it, I'm not a believer, but I'm not a non-believer either. Um, but I will talk to her because that just makes me feel better. Whether I believe it or not, I don't know. But does it make me feel better? Yep. So I'm yeah. going to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, and there'll be days where I just had a really rough day. And I'll be like, Aunt Jane, just, just ah, and I'll, and I'll let her hear my day. You know, that's by the time I get home, because it's about a 45 minute drive, I, I'm, I'm okay when I get home because I got all that frustration out. Oh, she yeah. kind of, you know, listened to me. I picture her sitting there listening to me, and she took that away for me. You know, just. Nope, that's a good um, story. I think I think that's what um, the spirit, a lot of spirits there for is to help us. I remember um, when uh, we moved into the house in Lake Odessa, I think my youngest daughter was only three, and she was taking stuff up for me and I remember coming downstairs she said I'm not taking any more stuff upstairs I do not want to see that man anymore I'm like okay and then I remember getting pictures of her and having orbs in the pictures and never really thought too much of it nothing really never really experienced a whole lot there just a spirit who really wanted to just take care of us you know I I spoke with him I said you know we're here to take care of your home you understand it's yours you know Mm -hmm. whether I understood that at that point, I didn't know if he was hearing me or not, but it was better just to take the chance. Right. But I remember, um, I remember one night getting in a big fight and my ex going into the bedroom and when he turned on the light, the light bulb blew up in his face. (laughs) For me, that's dangerous. I feel that that was (laughs) that spirit's way of telling him to knock it off. He didn't like it. Okay. And I remember one time going on, um, we were going to go camping and I remember saying, don't let me forget the battery charger that's in the garage because we're going to need it. And so we get right. in the car, then all of a sudden the garage light comes on by itself. And I'm like, yeah, the battery charger. And so I ran into the, the garage, I got the battery charger, and as soon as I got right. back in the car, the light went off. Again, I think it was just his way, the spirit, mm-hmm. whoever mm-hmm. it was that was there, of connecting with me and right. helping. Like, you know, I think they just want to connect. Yeah. To know that there's, they so want they, you to know that they're there and yeah. vice versa. Like, hey, I know you're it's, here. Especially if they're earthbound. They're looking for right. somebody a lot of times to help them cross over. Yes. I wasn't at that stage at that time in any shape or form. I just kind of understood the idea that spirits around us. Now, going back to, or rounding back around to the the thing of, um, of earthbound. Now, my research... <clears throat> um, says that the the light has closed for them to cross over. Um, now, is there a way to open yes. that back up? Yep, and um, there's lots of different ways. And you know, like I would, um, I would, I um, would, I would sit in a circle of candles. Okay, and it's a lot of times it's a prayer of just crossing them over. It you know, physical mediums are great for that because they can really speak. So is it because that they have, I don't mean to interrupt you. No, you're all right. Um, These are questions that are, I guess that I've always thought about, but never Mm -hmm. realized that. Um, Now, is it because the medium or whoever does that has that much energy that they need to be able to open that back up? It's a little bit of being able to um, communicate with that spirit and let them know that 
they're dead, but they need to cross over, but they're going to help them walk into the light. Okay. And it's sort of like almost when um, that belief of the light comes up, it opens for them. Okay. You know, a lot of times when we cross over, and, you know, I've, and when, when I've experienced, you know, my mediumship experience is one of my first ones. I remember being a little girl and her wanted me to tell her mom that, that she was okay, that she was sorry, but she was okay. And then she took me into the energy of what it feels like to cross over and what it feels like to be on the other side. Okay. And if you knew, you'd never want to come back. Yeah, so it's it's that realization that when we cross over, our loved ones are there to greet us, and we do walk into a white light, and we walk down to a hallway, and then one of the first sure things that we so. do, we go into a room to review our life. It and sometimes it takes spirit a lot longer than other spirits to come up. That's why sometimes when um we want to communicate with spirit that's just crossed over, we can't. They're not ready yet. They have okay. to, they have to learn that life lesson because that's why we're here to learn life right. lessons, and then they progress the level of heaven okay and so when an earthbound energy when you have an earthbound energy they turned away from the light whether they didn't know it was what it was for or they just didn't want to go but they're stuck and so when you get the right kind of medium you can help them you know we can cross over if you have a more of a negative spirit you want somebody who's more experienced you don't want to just try it yourself right there you know there's different <clears> levels <throat> That's something always to keep in mind. But that that's basically what happens. They turn away. Whether And sometimes maybe the spirit just doesn't want to face. Maybe they didn't leave a great light. And they don't want to okay. face that that projection screen of I can understand seeing that. their life. Because you know, nobody wants them. to see their own faults. I don't. Nobody likes to be told that they were wrong. Or they did something wrong. Mm -hmm. Or... It, or see the pain that's, that they inflicted on other people. Oh, gosh. Because we've all inflicted pain on other people. Because if people really understood the pain that they do <laughs> uh, inflict on other people, oh, my gosh. If you're any type of decent human being, that would crush you. Because mm -hmm. I know it would crush me. I try so hard to be so good to everybody else. I don't worry about myself. And that's okay with me. Mm -hmm. You know? Nope. But... I see other people either hurting me or hurting people I care about or just hurting a stranger. And it's like, what? 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 I, I, I couldn't imagine them having to actually step back out of the picture or out of the box yeah. and have to watch that happen. You know, mm -hmm. I'd be like, wow, I really did that? That's why I try to, at the moment, think of myself at the moment, if that makes any sense. Like, yeah, it does. I, I, I need to put myself where I am right now. Okay, I'm going to react this way to this situation. I, 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 I don't think a lot of people... Think about that. Th yeah. Because if, if, if you did have to... If there was a rewind button and you had to go back and watch, you would not treat somebody that way or no. do something like that to somebody. But see, for me, I believe that there's really no hell. What I believe is when you cross over, what the real hell is, is coming back to Earth oh. and living that same lifestyle all over again and learning the same painful lessons. When I'll you, cheers to that, sister. When you, <laughs> Mama. when you get to, you know, those people who are very depressed, you know, bipolar, and they can't learn their lessons, it's because yeah. their soul refuses to learn the lesson. Oh. And so you come back. That's the real hell, is Earth. That, for me, that's my belief. I really hope I'm on the last step and I do get to go to heaven and I get to see my loved ones because... Well, we always go to heaven. I think there's just different levels now, do of you... heaven. Like different vibrations, so to speak. Okay, so with that being said, with the different levels, do you think that's a... How do I don't want to phrase that. Do you think that's a, a type of reincarnation? Yes. I think um, okay. what happens is we the whole... And you've heard me say this. I say it all the time. <laughs> One of my favorite sayings is, you know, we are not human beings trying to live a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings who have come to Earth to live a human experience. And that's so that we can grow and learn life lessons. We sign up for our life lessons, okay. even the painful ones. We uh, sign contracts with the people who are going to cause us pain. And that's sometimes karmic for other lifetimes. But it's to learn life lessons so that when we cross over, we can w watch that projection and okay. grow. And the more we grow, the higher our vibration and the higher we reach. You know, the angelic realms, realms okay. of our guides. Those, that's all vibration. 
and I, it's, it's all heaven. It's just a different part. It's sort of like you start as a young soul and it takes many lifetimes to become the old soul and finally reach that stage. Okay. That's what it's all about. Is so we can become the ultimate, the ultimate vibration, the vibration of love. It, you know, the ascension of vibrating to the fifth dimension, which is love. And that's why you see all the chaos. So that'll put us at our final yes. resting area, per se. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's interesting. It is interesting. That's, yes. Wow. That's why, that's why one time we're going to talk about past life readings yes. and why it's really a good idea to get a past life reading because... Wait until you hear our past life reading. <laughs> Listeners, go. you will love it. And by all means, have some wine accessible so you can listen. Listen with your girlfriends. Listen at work. Listen while you're meditating. I don't care. It's going to be great because this is an amazing story. In it our, is a cool story. That, yes, really in, in our future episodes, um, just stay with us. Um, this episode actually lasted a lot longer than I expected <laughs> for being an intro. Um, for being an intro episode, but that's wonderful. Um, yeah, wow, this was great. Well, speaking, <laughs> I, I'm excited. Speaking of meditation, yes. Um, I, for me, meditation is everything. I think it's important, even if you sit for five minutes a day. To meditate and connect not only with yourself but the spirit around you and with God and to pray and you know to take that moment to be in your own energy and to embrace it and through meditation for this last year I my, my guides and my angels they led me to write a book with something to meditate on and what it is is a daily inspirational book of you know I connected with astrology I connected with my readings and I wrote about the overall general energy of the day and something inspirational to meditate on because for me I have to have something to meditate on so if you don't mind to close off I'd like to read what to meditate on for today April 5th um mama Mary I want you to <laughs> I just want this known from here on out from episode one until infinity when we are done which I I hope to God we're not I hope our listeners just keep coming back and back me and too. back me too um even if it's for one, two, three episodes, only scroll through, see what you're interested in, whatever, but spread the word. We will end the show out with um, a passage from Mama Mary's book. Nice. And, and with that being said, um, how can they get this book if they wanted to purchase it or even just... Well, they can find it on Amazon, but... um. If they're ever interested in getting a better rate, they can always contact me on my Facebook page, Spiritual Voices, and I have a link that um, they can download for a cheaper price. Fair enough. I like cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say cheap. There is a better word for cheap. There is frugal. And, and, I, and, and yeah, Clarence. <laughs> I, I, I like frugal. I'm a very frugal person. I, I, it's another thing I pride myself on is being frugal. But anyway, go ahead and read your passage. And All please, right. please look into purchasing her book or contact her. With today's energy, you will have the desire to get to the heart of the matter. Dig to the depths of your soul. Continue to, cont continue to grow spiritually. You have to search out why there is a sense of restlessness within you. Trust your intuition. Deep down, you know where you belong energetically, and you know where your soul desires. Ask the universe to breathe into you that magical breath of fire. During your meditation today, seek your inner spiritual truth and be honest with yourself about what it is you crave in life. Every day, our soul battles our ego. Work on quieting the ego and sitting with your higher self for a while. This is where you find your true north. You are a unique soul, and it is time to share with the others. There is a need within you to connect with like-minded people and to be experiencing more. Your spiritual gifts are opening and psychic gifts are beginning to emerge. Feel the soul of the gypsy flowing through your veins and allow it to carry you along in a spiritual, mystical, and richer. Isn't that, why we all, isn't that what we all seek? Many things are happening at the moment, and you are at the center of it. Uplift your soul and play in the waves of the gypsy's tide. The spirit in me salutes the spirit in you. 
Mary. Okay. I do believe that will wrap up our first episode. Um, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> our first episode. Um, stay tuned for more Paranormal XL. And remember, don't yuck someone else's yum. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to write in with your own stories that you would like us to read, um, questions or comments, email us at paranormalxl at writeme.com. That is paranormalxl at w-r-i-t-e-n-e dot com. Or find us on Facebook at Paranormal XL page. Um, we look forward to hearing from you. Any yeah. ending thoughts, Mary? Ending thoughts? Oh, put those messages on the Facebook page. If you have any questions or want a mini reading about a question or some kind of answer to something that's happening to you that you're afraid of, that you don't need to be afraid of, we have the answers. Just contact us. Let's say maybe um, if you guys wanted some type of online reading, we could, I don't want to say give one away, whatever, but we could yeah. do a, um, um, a Facebook Live. We could do I'm, that. I'm we could post one. their questions. Yeah. And we can, I can do the reading for that person. Oh, it'll be great. We can win a contest. I think it'll be great. Um, yeah. I hope to, I hope you guys are tuning in next week because it's going to be awesome. We're working on superstitions and the history of superstitions, which doing the research on it has been incredible. Like, well, yeah, wow. it explains where a lot of our fear comes from. And yeah. learning the superstitions, you kind of discover that there's not a whole lot to fear. Well, yeah. It's just... and, and looking through, like, the list of superstitions, I'm like, wow, I say that, like, 80 times a day. Or I think <laughs> that 80 times a day. Yeah. And how much superstition is an everyday part of your life. And, and find out why. Like, mm -hmm. and the history behind it and where it came from. Because you will be amazed. Like, Yes, it's fascinating. Wow. And it does. Oh, for sure. It ties into that paranormal. Oh, Definitely. For sure. And, oh, we're going to hit so much more. Um, yeah, it's going to be exciting. Oh, my gosh. The, the, I'm excited about the <laughs> spirit hunting. We have a couple That's things lined fun. up to go and visit. And, oh, man. Yeah. And I'm scared of the dark. And you are, too. <laughs> so this should be interesting. It will be interesting. If you guys sure. want to send us a flashlight, that would be <laughs> Make sure you phenomenal. Make batteries. Yeah, we need batteries. <laughs> Any housing. <laughs> oh wow. Anyway, um, yeah, um, that you tune in next week to hear about superstitions and the history on it, because that that is also very interesting. Um, but be patient. We will try to hit everything paranormal that we yeah. can. There's just so much that I didn't even realize until we discussed starting this podcast. Yeah. Like, it's fascinating. Wow. So, really like, is. all the way to Aliens. Like, I have oh, people yeah. at work going, we want those episodes. I'm like, okay, guys, give me a minute. We have to get there. We'll work our way there. So, if there is anything Paranormal XL that you guys want to hear, email us. Again, that is ParanormalXL at WriteMe.com. Like, email us. Tell us your stories. If you have an idea you want to hear about, send it in. Yeah, make sure you go to our page and like it, too. Just look up Paranormal XL and it'll pull it up and just like our page. Oh. <clears throat> oh, yeah. On Facebook. Yeah. Oh, wow. That is a lot of <laughs> wine I've had. Wow. Okay, yeah. And you know what? Always drink wine. Don't wine. Drink wine. That's right. That's a good one. I need to put that on a shirt. Um. Yeah. Whoa. Paranormal, Paranormal XL. We don't wine. We just drink <sighs> wine. Yes. We are amazing. All right. Thank you guys for listening. This has been fabulous. Um, I really hope that you um, tune in next week. Yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you guys. Or gals.